The US-China tech war isn't being fought just with chips and trade deals. Its most decisive battlefield is hidden in a single mineral, lithium. Whoever controls it won't just dominate electric cars and clean energy. They could control the entire future of global power. And right now, China holds the winning hand. But Canada may be the wild card. You've probably heard of the US-China tech war, but you might not realize its most crucial front is a tiny silvery white mineral that's suddenly as strategic as oil was in the 20th century. As demand for EV batteries, grid storage, and military technology soars, the global lithium market is tightening, and China now controls over 60% of refining and more than 75% of battery cell production. That gives Beijing enormous leverage in the global supply chain a chokehold the U.S. is urgently trying to break by seeking new allies. Enter Canada. With an estimated 1.4 million short tons of reserves, it could be America's vital hedge against Chinese dominance. But here's the catch. In 2023, Canada produced just 1.8% of the global supply. And the reason why is more complicated than you might think. Today, we'll dig into the hurdles, the alliances, and why this mineral could decide the future of the tech war. It's a strange world we live in, one where the countries with the most resources aren't always the ones who benefit the most from them. Think of the reserve production paradox. The power in the lithium market isn't held by the nations with the largest in-ground resources, but those with the capacity to extract and process them. The United States and the countries of the Lithium Triangle in South America, Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile hold the lion's share of global reserves. Canada is right up there too, with an estimated 3.3 to 6.3 million short tons of lithium reserves, placing it among the top global holders. Yet the production data tells a dramatically different story. In 2023, while Australia and Chile dominated production, Canada produced only about 3,572 short tons, just 1.8% of the global supply. In fact, Bolivia, with the world's largest reserves, produced less than 1% of the global supply. This highlights a crucial point. Possessing geological assets is merely a starting point. Without the ability to convert these raw materials into processed lithium chemicals, reserves confer little to no geopolitical influence. This is the central challenge for Canada. Not discovery, but development. The lithium market is also prone to extreme volatility. Prices surged to historic highs in late 2022, only to collapse by 90% in the following 18 months. This instability makes it incredibly difficult for capital-intensive, long-timeline mining projects in Western countries to secure financing, especially when they must adhere to stringent and costly environmental, social, and governance standards. This market volatility isn't just an economic issue. It can be seen as a feature of the geopolitical landscape. State-backed enterprises in China are less sensitive to these short-term fluctuations and can use them to strategically manage output and capacity. They can flood the market, drive down prices, and make new Western projects financially non-viable, effectively delaying the emergence of a competitive North American supply chain. And that's where the real story begins. Next up, we'll see how China has managed to take control of the entire supply chain, giving it a massive strategic advantage. China's dominance in the global lithium market isn't a fluke. It's the result of a calculated multi-decade industrial strategy. Beijing recognized the strategic importance of battery materials long before Western nations did and methodically built its control over the most critical, high-value-add segments of the supply chain. This control, particularly in midstream refining and downstream manufacturing, now acts as a strategic choke point, granting China immense geopolitical leverage. Beginning in the early 2000s, China implemented an aggressive, vertically integrated strategy State-backed companies were subsidized to acquire mining assets and raw material agreements across the globe. At the same time, Beijing invested massively in building refining capacity. China now controls over 60% of global lithium refining and over 75% of battery cell production. This strategic decision allows other countries, like Australia, to bear the capital costs and environmental risks of mining, while the critical value-add step and the associated leverage remain firmly in Chinese hands. This creates what's known as a refining trap. Even if allied nations like Canada and Australia significantly increase their output of raw lithium ore, the material has few places to go for processing outside of China. 
Without a parallel investment in non-Chinese refining capacity, any increase in Western allied mining production risks inadvertently reinforcing China's strategic position. What's even more concerning is China's willingness to weaponize this control. Since 2023, China has implemented export controls and licensing requirements on various critical minerals, often in direct retaliation to Western restrictions on semiconductor technology. These actions serve as a powerful signal that Beijing can disrupt vital technology and defense supply chains at will. This brings us to a crucial question. How is the U.S. responding to this threat? The answer lies in a new strategy that's all about building alliances, and Canada is their premier partner. Faced with this strategic vulnerability, the United States has initiated a profound shift in its industrial policy. Moving away from decades of globalization and offshoring, Washington is now engaged in a national mobilization to build a secure, resilient, and reliable supply chain for batteries and the critical minerals that underpin them. This response is multifaceted, combining massive domestic investment with the cultivation of allied partnerships. The U.S. has officially declared lithium a critical mineral for national security providing the justification for extraordinary government intervention in the market. This is an acknowledgement that the free market, left to its own devices, failed to price in the geopolitical risk of dependence on China. The centerpiece of this new approach is a set of policies designed to catalyze a domestic battery industry. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 offers powerful financial incentives, like a direct production tax credit for domestically processed critical minerals. The Department of Defense is also leveraging the Defense Production Act to make direct investments in critical mineral projects, like the Kings Mountain Lithium Mine in North Carolina. The Department of Energy has also committed a massive $2.26 billion conditional loan for the Canadian-led Thacker Pass Mine in Nevada. But the U.S. knows it can't go it alone. That's why a parallel pillar of its strategy is friendshoring, with Canada identified as the premier partner. This partnership, formalized through the Canada-U.S. Joint Action Plan on Critical Minerals Collaboration, provides a framework for aligning policies and coordinating investments to build an integrated North American supply chain. Canada is already the U.S.'s top minerals trading partner, with $146 billion in annual trade. So what exactly is Canada doing to seize this opportunity? We'll explore Canada's own strategy and the hurdles it must overcome to live up to its potential. Canada's lithium potential is a necessary but not sufficient condition for the success of the U.S. strategy. While it cannot on its own decide the U.S.-China tech war, China's lead is simply too substantial to be overcome by a single nation's resource endowment. Canada's role is critically enabling and indispensable. Canada possesses a unique combination of attributes that make it the single most important partner for the U.S. World-class geological assets, political stability, strong ESG credentials, and geographic proximity. Recognizing this, Canada has introduced its own comprehensive policy framework to catalyze its domestic critical minerals sector. The Canadian Critical Minerals Strategy, backed by nearly $4 billion in federal funding, aims to position Canada as a global supplier of choice. Key to this strategy is the 30% critical mineral exploration tax credit to boost domestic production. However, a critical gap remains, the lack of domestic midstream processing and refining capacity. This is the missing middle of the Canadian supply chain. Without the domestic capacity to convert raw spodamine concentrate into high-purity lithium hydroxide or carbonate, Canada risks replicating Australia's predicament, becoming a large-scale exporter of low-value raw materials to be refined elsewhere, primarily in China. Take the Snow Lake lithium mine in Manitoba, for instance. This project represents the ideal vision for 21st century mining in North America, with its commitment to sustainability and use of 100% hydro-powered methods. The developers have even signed a memorandum of understanding with South Korean battery giant LG to supply a future processing plant to be built nearby. This highlights the crucial symbiotic relationship required between upstream extraction and midstream refining to create a viable regional supply chain. The development of projects like Snow Lake and the Canadian-led Thacker Pass in Nevada, which is capable of supplying up to 25% of global demand, also reveals the profound challenges facing North American development. Protracted permitting timelines, complex environmental reviews, and the need for meaningful indigenous consultation create a significant speed-to-market asymmetry when compared to China's state-driven approach. So while Canada's lithium may not single-handedly decide the tech war, it is the essential combination of geology, political stability, and geographic proximity that provides the United States and its allies with a credible chance to compete. The ultimate outcome will depend not on geology alone, 
but on the speed and efficacy of policy execution. But here's a thought to chew on. The race for resources is a critical holding action, but the ultimate long-term victory in the energy storage domain might be determined not in the mines, but in the research and development labs. The ongoing race to develop and commercialize viable alternatives such as sodium ion or solid-state batteries could fundamentally reshape the landscape and render the geopolitical competition over lithium moot. The US and Canada are forging a battery metals block, a new North American industrial strategy to compete on the global stage. This partnership, solidified by the Canada-US Joint Action Plan on Critical Minerals Collaboration, aims to align policies on resource development. The U.S. is even using the Defense Production Act to invest directly in Canadian products, treating them with the same urgency as domestic ones. Yet this integration is a double-edged sword for Canada. It offers access to U.S. capital but risks subordinating its own industrial strategy to U.S. priorities. This partnership is necessary, as Canada alone cannot win the U.S.-China tech war. China's entrenched dominance and massive economies of scale are too much for one country to overcome. However, Canada's role is indispensable. The race is now about whether the US and Canada can translate strategy into operational mines and refineries faster than China can disrupt them. For Canada, this is a generational challenge with the potential to become a clean energy leader. Lithium is just the beginning. The US and Canada are racing to build a secure supply chain, but China's head start is massive and the clock is ticking. The real twist? This entire battle might be temporary. If sodium ion or solid state batteries break through, the lithium wars could end overnight, shifting the balance of power once again. So the question is, will Canada's lithium buy enough time for the West to catch up? Or will China's dominance prove unshakable? I'll be diving into those future battery technologies in an upcoming video. Make sure you're subscribed, because the story of who controls energy storage isn't over yet.